Could London's rising property prices be blamed on foreign criminals? David Cameron certainly wants to stop them buying here. In Singapore today, he issued a clear warning that London is not a place to stash your dodgy cash. This is how it works. An overseas company uses stolen or laundered money to buy in the capital. So can the Prime Minister stop it and how? Our political correspondent Simon Harris has the story. For fans of a good mystery, there's nowhere better than Baker Street. But the visitors queuing for the Sherlock Holmes Museum at 221B were oblivious to the mystery just a few doors away. Who are the secretive owners of 219? Just last week, there were allegations of links between a former Kazakh secret police chief and London property portfolio worth nearly £150 million. Chido Dunn discovered 219 Baker Street was registered to a company in the British Virgin Islands. She works for an organisation exposing international corruption. It's very difficult to know who exactly is behind that BVI company. What we do know is that there are a lot of links between the people involved in the, com in, in, in the properties um, and the companies involved in the properties to Rakat Aliyev, who was the head of uh, uh, the Kazakh Secret Service and um, also a tax police. Lawyers for the former police chief's family, he since died, denied he was the real owner of the property but wouldn't say who was. London's booming property market has long been regarded as a sound investment by overseas buyers, which is why the crooked and the corrupt are so keen to hide their dirty money in our bricks and mortar. More than 36,000 London properties are owned by companies in offshore tax havens. In Westminster, with its exclusive homes, it's almost 10%. And in neighbouring Kensington and Chelsea, more than 7% are registered abroad. What we do know from some of the uh, investment data uh, is that China and Russia uh, are very significant uh, investors into, into the UK as, as markets. Those are high corruption risk countries. Estate agents are expected to flag up suspected money laundering property deals. If we come across people, buyers, investors from abroad or from the UK that we think might be slightly suspicious, we should report it immediately to the HMRC and we do that regularly. Until the law changes and foreign buyers are forced to identify themselves, it's impossible to know just how many overseas property deals in London are bankrolled by dirty money. Simon Harris, ITV News. I'm joined now by the property expert, Kate Faulkner. Thank you very much for coming in. Will a change in the law be enough to stop this? Because presumably it's very hard to trace laundered money. That's the point of it. Well, it is, and particularly in this case. I mean, when you and I would buy normally, then it's, it's us, it's our identity and where do our funds come from. And there's an awful lot of checks that are made now, which mm. is sometimes a surprise to people who haven't sold for a long time. In this case, you're talking about finding out all about a company and then finding out all about where those funds come from. Um, and what you've got is you've got to try and get the estate agents involved in trying to, um, trying to think, oh, I'm not sure this guy's quite right or this buyer's quite right. But then it passes to the solicitor. You also have banks involved as well. So there should be enough people in the chain to pick these things up. But would you believe the criminals are even putting people in the solicitors so that they can try and launder the money themselves. Yeah, I would so believe that. I absolutely it, would it, believe that because it's really difficult, isn't it? The it responsibility is. is already on the estate agents. What should they be looking out for? Well, you've really got to look out for somebody that is um, maybe not asking all of the, the right questions, if you like. And certainly when anybody mentions we're buying all of this with cash, which a lot of people are these days. Mm. Um, so cash, 100% cash, that should sort of set a red flag. Um, asking you for solicitors who might not ask as many questions as they, you would like them to would be another way. Um, and not being keen or honest or open about where the funds come from. So say, so, well, maybe I won this money on a horse or something and I'm going to give you that cash. And very briefly, how do you think flags. this foreign investment, this dodgy cash that Cameron is talking about, is affecting property prices here? Um, it's a, that's a really hard question to answer because we're not sure how many properties are affected. Certainly the big areas like uh, Westminster um, and Kensington and Chelsea, we're actually not seeing any price increases now, but track back to the height of the market, they're certainly the areas that have seen the biggest house prices rises. So you're talking 60% in the last few years versus Barking and Dagenham, which is 9%. And you're less likely to get somebody running in there to Incredible to buy a difference there, Kate. Very Fonda. big difference. Thank you, thank you.
Well, no matter where you live in London, the price of property is going up. New figures show they've reached a record high. You can find out what that means for the price of your home by going to our website, where you'll find a complete borough-by-borough -borough breakdown of the figures. That's at itv.com London.